Good morning, brethren. I've got good news for you. Good news. You know, you, you can't stand up and talk for God without talking about good news. You can talk about the end of the world, and it's good news. The destruction of the wicked, and it's good news. But before I start, you know, there's, I remembered back when I was a child, and it was just seems like yesterday. Um, we sang a song that um, some of you know, so you're going to have to help me. But um, I wish we had Brother Dick up here because he could, he could just do it. Remember um, the song that, that he used to do? Um, no, I don't know what it is. What is it? Yeah, Behold He Comes. Remember that? Okay, it was, it's, a, it's a part song. You know, you've you got to have a part in it. Just like the resurrection, you got to have a part in it. But um, it's a part now that there's the basses. You know, they, they sing. Oh, we're just going to do it once, and you'll know. Okay? They'll just join in whenever wherever you feel like you can. But yeah, this is, this, you got to have lungs to sing this song. Okay, you ready now? Come on. Behold the That is so much better, you know. You just have to, in glory, you can ask him, he'll lead you through that. I remember when I was a child, um, you know, I grew up in Brother Gibbons' assembly most of my life, and um, I never had a problem until the day that I, I realized that I was a sinner. I can remember as seven or eight years old, it was, I was pretty young. You couldn't really sit under Brother Gibbons preaching long without coming to this conclusion. That God was holy and man was, was lost in sin. I can remember thinking, I, why? Why can't it all just go away? Why can't I just be like I was yesterday before I knew? And I, I asked the Lord, why? Why? Why do I have to go through this? Why do I have to know? I don't want to know. I want to be innocent. I want just to just to love God and not I have to make these hard decisions. But you know, it was a blessing. It was a blessing that God showed me. He brought it to my understanding that you can't go on like you are. You can't. He's going to destroy the world one of these days, and he's interested in us being prepared. Amen. The fact of his coming, it's a fact. Just like God, God is in heaven, it's a fact. See, his coming has been spoken out of eternity to a people that are living in time. It's a fact. To God, it's not like God saying, well, I'm... You know, no, God, it's he sees the end from the beginning. It's a fact. He's sending his son back one of these days. As Brother Fred would say, some of these days, we're going to get out of this mess. It's going to happen. Amen. See, that's why we want to we wanna live in expectation to the soon coming of the Lord. It's ready to everyone. Every single person that's had that hope has purified himself. See, this is the only thing. The bringing in of a better hope, it works. The law didn't. Amen. But it did teach us that we weren't ready. But the bringing in of a better hope, see, it shows us that we, we are heirs. That we can fellowship with our God. The fact of his coming. Jesus said, now I am no longer in the world. He was very much planted in the world. He was there. But see, in his heart he wasn't. In his heart, he says, I am no more 
I like it. He lifted up his eyes to heaven. Need to be more praying like that. He, he, he loved his father. He always did those things that pleased the Father. He said, I am no longer in the world, but, but they are. Keep them from the evil. Keep them from the evil. This is learning how to be a preacher. I have to say things twice. He said, this is what I was given. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. He doesn't say, I won't let your heart be troubled. But in saying, let not your heart be troubled, he calls them to play you. Amen. See, he's interested in you. He's interested in you being prepared for the glory that's going to be revealed in you. Amen. Wouldn't do much good to reveal glory in somebody that wasn't ready, wasn't prepared to be able to rule with him and reign with him forever and ever. But see, God's intently interested on you being there. Amen. And he wanted... You'd have an untroubled heart. Now, wait a minute. He left us in a troubled land. In a land where, where trouble, you know, is like the sea. It's cast, to, it, it's, it's never peaceful. Never. It's always uneasy, always rest. You're born under trouble as the sparks fly upward. You're not going to get out of it while you're here. Might as well not try to get out of it. Just, just try to endure unto the end. To endure it. Amen. Nope. He says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Another place, neither let it be afraid. Why? Well, you believe in God. See, these people believe in God. Believe also in me. You know God's going to take care of you. Believe that Christ has already saved you. He's already, he's, he's, God sanctified him and sent him into the world to take care of what you couldn't take care of. Amen. Took away your sins. The sin's gone now. We can come confidently. Why? Because he's there. He's there at God's right hand. Amen. Let not your heart be troubled. Don't, don't let Satan trouble your heart. Now see, ever since Christ said this, Satan's been, I'm going to trouble their heart. No, no, let not your heart be troubled. It's an issue. That's why he said it. Christ didn't say anything that wasn't an issue. Our hearts can be troubled. Amen. You believe in God, believe also in me. No other man could say this. Any other man said that, he he's cast him out. Don't, don't believe him. Christ's the only one that can say this. Amen. You want to, you say way you believe in God, believe in me. No, we don't follow men, not like that. We follow the man. Amen. The man! Christ Jesus. Christ pulls back the curtain and lets us see into eternity a little bit. He says, in my Father's house are many mansions. And then the, the one, the, 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 the creator of all things says, if it were not so, I, I would have told you. He's not, he's not the deceiver. We have, we have someone out there that is a deceiver. But it's not our Lord. Our Lord will never tell you anything that isn't 100% accurate and to your advantage. It's to your advantage. In his house are many mansions. See, now, is your name on one of those? He is your name? He said, I'll not blot your name out of the book of life. It's like getting the bulldozer out and get rid of that mansion over there. I say, well, it's not really like that. He said, he said he, he wouldn't blot your name out if you overcame. I assume that to mean that if you don't overcome, he'll blot your name out of the book of life. Your name was there. And it was blotted out because you didn't overcome. Amen. Now, was that God's will? Some people say, well, that was God's will. God is not willing that any should perish. Amen. So don't ever blame God for your name being blotted out. Of course, on that day, you're, you won't say anything. <laughs> you won't say anything. Your mouth will be stopped. 
The Holy Spirit will fully convince you that God was able to save you. The Holy Spirit is, is, is a good convictor, a good convincer. He's, he's working on our behalf now with groanings that cannot be uttered. Amen. For you, that's why he told us this. There's many mansions in my, in my father's house. I go to prepare a place for you. Now, I say, well, don't go, Lord. We're doing just fine with you here right now. The many mansions are mansions because they're in the Father's house. See, that they're not around the Father's house. They're in the Father's house. Now, uh, you know what houses are. It says, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, eternal in the heavens, not made with hands. For in this we groan. We're in this tabernacle. Where we're at right now, looking at what's going to happen, we groan. Amen. We're earnestly desiring to be clothed on with our building of God. Amen. We want it so bad that we're able to give up this world. Why? Because it's far better. Amen. It's far better. The gold that's up ahead is much better than these asphalt streets. That's the comparison. He even makes it. Streets of gold or lake of fire. Now it's, it, it's, 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 well, that's such a stark comparison. Who would do that? Just anyone that walks in the flesh. It's all it takes. Don't have to be special at all. Just walk in the flesh. It'll deliver you to the lake of fire. The flesh, well, what does the flesh profit? It will deliver you to the lake of fire. The spirit with the everlasting arms wants to deliver us into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. We're going to be delivered somewhere. For in this we groan, and that's a good sign. Are you groaning? Do you want to be clothed on with your body from heaven? Well, the fact is that it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Now, whether you're prepared for it or not is really a side issue. With the, we're talking about the fact. It's a side issue whether you're pre prepared. The fact is you're getting a new body. Christ purchased it for you. When he laid down his life, he purchased you a new body. Now... It's in his loving kindness, he's given us his word, given us the gift of the Holy Spirit, given us able ministers of the gospel to prepare us to inhabit that new body. Amen. See, what a gracious God we have. He's not willing that any should perish. He doesn't want to put anybody in that new body that isn't ready because that's called eternal destruction. If you're not ready to, be, to inhabit that new body, it's eternal destruction. See, you're tasting of it now. You know what it's like. You got a new spirit that's in an old body. So you're tasting of it. You know the good that I would, I don't do. See, that's it's just a little, it's a little small little picture of what hell's all about. See, the lust that I would, I can never do for all eternity. I can look into, into heaven and not participate. I can see what could have been mine. And not be able to drink from the water of life. I can be thirsty and not be filled. He wanted the water. You know, the rich man there, he's, send him, send Lazarus and get me some water. It's hot in here. Well, they, you know, Lazarus was comforted. He said, well, speaking as a man, Lazarus is too busy. He's comforted right now. He had more to do. He was with the king then. We're, we're groaning. And so Brother Floyd, he, he wants to make a sign for the assembly there. It says, come groan together. <laughs> come groan with us. You know, they always decide these building programs. It's a groaning program. Now he that has wrought us or made us for the self-same thing as God. He wants us to see this, that God has, this whole thing 
It's been God's purpose from the very beginning to bring many sons to glory. And his very effective way in doing it. I mean, he's, God's effective. He, everything he's done is effective. You know, the, you look at the law in, 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 in a fleshly view and you say, it wasn't effective. No, it was effective. It did exactly what God gave it to do. Amen. If men don't see it, they're just not seeing it right. God, it, God gave it to us so that we would run the Christ. You know, the Jews, the first time, they should have run the Christ. We've seen that this law, this writing of ordinance that is against us is, oh, you're so far superior than that, Lord. Well, we gladly relinquish the law and, and, and lay hold on eternal life. That's what should have happened. See, they were schooled. They, they should have done that. And now the Lord's going to come back and, and all organized religion's going to receive him, right? They're going to say, oh, Lord. No. No, see, it's a sad commentary. Amen. It's a sad commentary when, when, when you can have the scriptures the Holy Spirit can be so available. Open heavens and a, a, a high priest sitting on the right hand of God. We should be groaning. Groaning, not happy, not content with this present situation. That's why God left us here. He left us here so that we would, we would see, we could see it. How else is he going to get us to see it? I mean, he just didn't speak us on the creation. He formed us. See? See? See, he, he, he wants us to see. He wants to be able to bring a, the animals in front of us and for us to be able to, this, hey, this, I don't have a mate. This reason together. God's interested in us seeing it. Amen. Job, he said, if a man die, shall he live again? <laughs> He's thinking about this. This is, Amen. thinking about this, oh, think about death. Tell your friends, I've been thinking about dying. I've been thinking about that. I've been thinking about how much I'm desiring to die and go to be with the Lord. It's, it's far better. Well, you, you may not have those friends very long. But then again, you might, see? You might. Those people might th think about it. He said, that's, that's, that's the beginning. Come, let's reason together. For our citizenship, okay, Job. I don't, I don't want to get off. I don't want to shortchange Brother Job here. He'll, All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. I won't wait anymore then, but until then I'll wait. I'll wait. It's a, it, we're waiting for the adoption to what? With the redemption of our body. This is a dilemma. It's a dilemma that we're in. And this fact changes everything. See, it, this fact that he's coming, it makes you, it enables you to be, to be able to wait. Amen. You see, we have to wait. Actually, you're going to wait whether you're in Christ or whether you're out of Christ. You're going to still wait. You know, be, people want to make, make the scoffers, they want to scoff, but they're waiting too. Yeah. It's just they're not as satisfied waiters. See, we're very satisfied. When, when you look at the coming of the Lord, it, you don't ever get unsatisfied either. Oh, he's going to come. and No, see it? You think, oh, he's going to come. And all my treasure that I sent ahead, it's, it's there. It's waiting. Amen. Brother Fred said, I've sent more ahead than I have now. Sent more ahead. He said, when I get there, I'm going to just go pick it up. Then it's mine. It fits my hand. He's, and he's talking about thoughts. So I have thought great thoughts about God. He said, they're gone now. They've escaped me now. He said, but they're there. See, he's, he's going to go put his arms around them and they're mine. God gave them to me. Me and God thought about these together. See, this, this, this thing of, of our, our minds. See, that's, that's where we, we, we serve the law of God with our mind. We think about God. and we're gonna, it's, it's us. It's the essence of who we are. God wants to change that. See, he wants to form that into his, into his creation. The body's kind of incidental right now. This body, it's the lesser body. It's kind of, it's a bothersome thing. It's, it's, it's always in the way. It's always. He said, thou shalt call and I will answer thee. He's looking forward. See, he's put in a bad situation there. Talk about circumstance. Job had a bad set of circumstances. 
I never had to deal with those kind of circumstances. Job did. And he said, when you call, I'll answer you. I'm ready right now. Amen. Thou wilt have a desire to the work of thine hands. Amen. The God's in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. God, it's by the grace of God that you're saved, not by your works. Aren't you glad of that? You don't have to remember your works when you talk about salvation. You remember God's works. Amen. You remember what Jesus did. See, and that draws you closer to the throne. Think about what Christ did on the cross, and it pulls you closer to God. That's why he gave us the Lord's table. He gave us the Lord's table to, to get us out of ourselves. You know, dwell on yourself. Draw on Christ. He's the one that's he's paved the way for God to work on your behalf. He's done it. He's paved the road to glory. He said, you think about me, and you'll stay on the road more. Think about me. He said, now are we the sons of God, but it doesn't appear that way. You can't readily see it just by looking at your, your body. See, there's another flaw of this body. You're not going to have that there. They look at you there, they're going to know. This is one of the sons of God. Look at, look at that. See, uh, they go, well, that's almost blasphemy. No, no we're going to have a body like it. His glorious body. Amen. I, I'm looking forward to that. Amen. We're going to take on the form of the Savior. Forever. It's not just part time, not temporarily then. Forever and ever and ever. Why? Because we saw him. You know, I, I didn't read the whole verse, but you know what it says. We're going we're gonna to be changed into the same image. Why? Because we're going to see him as he is. Amen. We're going to see him as he is. He's going to come in the clouds of glory. See, Hal Lindsey, a few years ago, messed everything up for some people. He messed it up. You know, I don't even, I don't even remember him saying that I was going to be changed. I, 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 he, he talked about Christ coming back and taking the church out and, and the world continuing on. But he missed the fact that I'm going to be changed. I needed to know that if I'm going to be changed now. Amen. I needed to know that. He shortchanged me. Okay, he, he, he come in and he, he, he took what God intended to change me and to give me power here over the flesh. And he, he neutralized it by some kind of a mysterious thing that he didn't even understand. He didn't even see it. He went past, past chapter 3 in Revelation and got all. And I'm going to tell him. In eternity, I'm going to tell him. Brother, you, you, you slighted me. Well, maybe I'm. But you know, things, weird things can happen when you believe false doctrines. You know, you can come home from work and your wife's shoes be there and her purse can be there and she can, she's gone. Now, if you believe what Hal Lindsay believed, where'd she go? She's not here. Now, I know I'm a sinner. And I went, the world's gone. It's been raptured up. And I've been left behind. Oh, I see, I say that because that's what I really thought. That. I really believed that. I looked all over, I couldn't find her. She's gone. God, God came and see, it was a lie. It was a lie. But see how that lie permeated? And you, it, started, it affected me. No. Every eye shall see him. See, when the elements, it's going to be hard when the elements are melting the fervent heat and it's all burned up and the works thereof. It's all burned up. I'm not going to hide that. Amen. It's going to happen. And it's at the same time we're going to have you receiving our inheritance. Our inheritance, yes, you know, you know what his inheritance is? It's you. Yes. It's you. You are his inheritance. He's, he promised him. He gave him the heathen for his inheritance. Yes. I, I glory in that. Look what God can do with the heathen. Look what he can do. And the Lord didn't say, oh, well, I don't know. He knew that the Father was going to work. That's going to be glorious. The Father doesn't work and it not be glorious. Amen. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. For you. Now, he came for you the first time. 
See, it was all been for you. He came for you. He died for you. He ascended up in heaven for you. He's now seated at the right hand of God for you. And he prepared a place for you. I know that. That's a fact. The place is prepared. Because he said, if I go away. And I know he's, I know he's there because I have the Holy Spirit. He has another promise. He said, I, he said, I, I tell you the truth. You know, whatever Jesus says, I tell you the truth. It's time to wake up and listen to the Savior. Amen. It's a verily, verily. That means listen. Listen to this. Let this change your life. Because this is one of the ones that are going to change your life. I tell you the truth. Listen to this. He's not going to lie to us. It is expedient for you that I go away. See, if, I, if he didn't go away, he said, he said, and prepare a place for you. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. So his going away was just as important as his coming. Amen. He, he came to take away what was in the way. He accomplished the mission. And he went away so the comforter could come. He could embody all of us at once. He, he could minister to all of us at once. He said, I, he said, I'm straightened. This, I can't, I can't, do you think we're straightened? Think of the Savior. He wants to work in all of us. And he can't, not while he's here. He's a man. He's shackled in this flesh. But he wanted to. Do you think? He, we, we don't know. We've never had that kind of, you know, to know, to be the son of God. To, to have lived with God in the past and to lay it aside and to come and to form in such a humble state, form of a man. To lay down your life. See, the manner of the kingdom is humility. We humble ourselves. In fact, you can't even receive the gospel without humbling yourself. You humble yourself. See, there's, there's no room for pride. Not in the kingdom. And in the ages to come, when we're gathered there together with him, and he gives us our reward, we have a crown of righteousness. We're going to just display him. See, it says we're going to cast him at his feet. We're going we're to know that it was because of him. We're going to be acutely aware that we wouldn't be there if it wasn't for him. We're going to cast our crowns at his feet. And in, the, that, in that act will be our first evident, our first token that we truly have been made in his image. Amen. I will come again. Jesus prayed for us. You know, the, it says the fervent, effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Oh, do we even need to say that before we say Jesus prayed for us? Jesus, the one who always did the things that pleased the Father, the one that never sinned, no guile was found in his mouth. Jesus prayed for you that you would be able to make it there, that you would be one with the Father just as he is one with the Father. Jesus prayed that prayer for you. Now, Jesus isn't happy with anything less than you being one with the Father. He wasn't happy that Jesus, oh, God just let him be in heaven. No. One with the Father. What a request. What a plan God had from the beginning. Amen. To bring many sons to glory meant to bring many sons into himself. Amen. We've been infused into God himself. Our mansions are in his house. Our houses, our tabernacles are in his. He said, then I'll dwell with them. I'll dwell with them then. They'll be my people. And I'll be their God. And just by virtue of that, there'll be no more tears. Why would you be crying in heaven? Why would you do that? You would never be sad. You're in the bosom of the Father. He's dwelling with you. Him and the Son, they're lighting your way. Amen. I and them and thou and me, that they may be made perfect. Now, see, that's beyond my comprehension perfect but that's what it says perfect in one 
That's a really the only way you could be in him. How else could you be? You couldn't be in, in him imperfect. But see, Christ, he's done a great work. He's taken away the sin that stood in the way. The sin that brought the curse. See, it, it's taken it away, so there's no more curse. See, not in the ages to come. The, 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 that which caused the curse is done away with. It's gone. It's right for God to be one with us. It's right. Amen. It's right. The Lord himself shall descend with a shout from heaven. Or from heaven with a shout. Either way. See, it's coming. He's coming from heaven. And he's going to interrupt our, our, our existence here. All at once. In a moment. You know, people, I talk to them and they're, I don't know how we think about the end of the world. Well, I don't know what's going to happen. Well, I know what's going to happen. I know. People want to know. How do you know? Well, because I went to the one that's coming back. And I said, Lord, how are you coming back? And he said, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you can look them up. He told me how he was coming back. He told me. It's even in the old covenant. He told me there, too. I went back there to Isaiah, and he told me. Just for as the, he said, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel both with wrath and fierce anger. God's not happy because his gospel hasn't been believed in the earth. He's not one bit happy. And he's coming back. And he's going to take all those who would not receive the gospel of his dear son. And he's going to cast them into the lake of fire. And he's not going to have one bit of remorse when he does it. Amen. It's not going to happen. Not on that day. God has been merciful, and he's given unto us the, his own blood, his life. He's shed it for us. And he's not content with men not believing it. He will not put up with it. Now, see, now we count the, 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 the time going on like this as the long-suffering of the Lord. He's long-suffering. He's not willing that any should perish. But on that day, make no mistake about it, he's going to take all those who rejected the blessed Son and cast them forever into a lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth on that day. Now this is the same God that saved you from the wrath to come. The same God that loves you with an everlasting love. The same God that would do, do you good and no harm all the days of your life. This is the same God. Same God that told us. He told us because he loves us. He doesn't want us to be on that side. Doesn't want us to be on the side of, of the goats. Not on that day. He knows. He knows. And he's told us. He says, I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Amen. And on that day, when the elements are melting with fervent heat, and the saints are caught up on a sea of glass. And they're standing there totally at peace. And they're totally agreeing with the Lord's doing. They're in total agreement. Amen. You know, they, their, 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 their father could be thrown into the lake of fire. And they would say, yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord, I agree. Amen. Thou art holy. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. Amen. You know, they, 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 they don't have a problem. In heaven with worship you know they they see the father and they fall down before him at his face and they cry holy 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 and they didn't even have a script no one kind of nudged them and said now's the time we got to <laughs> the thing is is that they saw God and it, 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 it caused them a response Amen. yes what God wants he wants what he wants out of us he wants us to see him as he is and respond to him that's called fellowship. Amen. He wants to fellowship with his people. So much, infinitely more than I've seen it. He wants us. He wants who we are. And he says, rend your heart and not your garments. Do that. And turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. He loves us with an everlasting love. But he says, I will come again. Now that same message will comfort the afflicted, and it should afflict the comfortable. Amen. Those things should happen. 
If you're if you're far away from the Lord, that should that message should should alarm you. He's coming again. Amen. I don't want to be caught in this condition. I don't want to be caught away from the Lord. He will swallow up death and victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears off of all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away. Amen. No more rebuke for his people. If you're going to be rebuked, it's going to be here. See, you only got a little bit more time to be rebuked. See? Submit to that. Amen. You just accept that. Just speak for the Lord. And if, if, you, if it falls on deaf ears, just say, thank you, Father. You gave me that opportunity. Just a little while longer. I only get to suffer just a little bit more. That's all. Then the Lord Jesus is going to come. He's, he's going he's to reward us. Behold, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. It will come. The day of the Lord will come. Amen. Yeah. Now, is that, well, is that a fact? Well, it's a, I think it is. It will come as a thief in the night. In the which the heavens and the earth. Well, you know. Is a thief in the night? How is that possible? How is it possible that he would, he's going to steal something from me? Well, yeah, he is. He's going to steal some things from me. He's going to steal this flesh, this vile body. He's going to come and steal it away. He's going to give me a body like in his glorious body, but it's going to cost me something, this vile body. Got to give it up on that day. He's also going to steal something away, the lust and the works thereof. He's going to steal them away. No more. The works that are in the earth are going to be burned up. No more. They're going to be gone. So he's given us a first fruit of that. And it's, it's all voluntary. You don't have to do this. But he's given you the ability now for you to already give them up ahead of time. Amen. See, you can voluntarily say, I, 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 I want to cut this off. Brother Dave was very good at that, bringing that up. But see, that's a voluntary. That's not mandatory. No, you don't have to do it. God's not going to, God's not going to work out of heaven and make you do it. He's not going to do that. If anybody tells you that, well, don't listen to him. God's not going to do that. He's already, he's already given us the testimony. He's given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. He's told us I'm coming again. Occupy till I come. Do it. Do it. You occupy. And I want to be more interested in pruning my own self than other people. Amen. You know, some people major in pruning other people. That's. But isn't it good to know that the Father is, is the um, in head of the pruning department? You know, he's, he's the husband. Amen. And he's very good. Said I, he's at a bruised reed. He, he, will, he won't cut it off. He won't. Smoking flax, he won't put it out. Why is that? Because he is more interested in us recovering ourselves from the snare of the devil. He's, he's, he's given it. He knows that his word is able to do it. He knows that if preachers will just preach the truth, that there will be people to believe. People will be able to recover themselves. Well, I just want to say the fact of his coming is sure. It's just as sure as the first time he came. He told them it was going to come. He was going to come. A branch was going to grow up out of the dry, parched ground. You know, he told them. And he did. He came. And he's coming again. I will come again. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints. Amen. He's got you in mind even with his coming glorified in the saints. I want to go, Father, and be glorified in, my, in the children you've given me. I want to go now so that they can, they can behold the glory that I had with you before, before we, eternity. Uh, let, let, I, I want to go now. He's in anticipation. Amen. And to be admired and all them that believe in that day. I, I, see, are you, do you believe in that day? Do you believe that day is really going to happen? If you do, then you can testify that it's changed your life. 
It changed your life. The day that you really believed he was coming back. You really saw it. He's coming back. And you believed it. It's, it's life transforming. Every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. I just want to thank God for giving us to know that.